Hi, once again this is Ed at Exotic Blanks and today I'm going to go over a product that we've had for some time but we have just gotten a new shipment in so we're going to have it available again. It is this and this comes in three or four colors. It's the circuit board blank and as you can see I hope the blank is in clear resin. Now this particular resin is not the easiest resin in the world to turn and so what we're going to do is go through showing you how I turn it and basically I want to make sure that if you purchase it you are comfortable with the fact that it's going to give you some challenges. So first thing you would do when you when you get the delivery of it make sure that you look at it and that there are no cracks or any defects in it. Honestly I don't think I've ever seen one that was cracked that was going to be a problem. But look it over, make sure you're comfortable with it so that you don't come back later and think that you had a cracked one and that's why it broke. As you can see I have a high, I have a pretty good light here. I'll move the camera a bit so you can see more of the light. It's a, it's a circular light but basically what you can do then is look through the thing it's not going to show real well on the camera but you can look through it and see if there's anything that looks like it's like it's cracked or a problem once you determine that it's not cracked you take it to the lathe and start working on it we'll do that next okay there's the blank and what I'm going to do is take a round file and run it through the end on both ends just in case there's anything in the tube this will clean it out <clears throat> now I'll take the <clears throat> excuse me now I have turn between center bushings available so I'm going to put turn between center bushings in there and they both fit very cleanly so I don't have to worry about crud in the in the tube now I will mount it on the lathe and we'll turn it. Now one suggestion that I have is if you're nervous about doing this, instead of putting it on the, in, on the lathe square, take this to a, your belt sander or some other sander <clears throat> and sand off these corners. Then again if you do that on, some people do it on a, um, a bandsaw as well, just be careful because obviously this is not an easy thing to saw so I prefer to take it to a belt sander and just sand that off and sand off all four but just to show that it can be done we are going to instead take a regular roughing gouge and I'm going to move this down just a little bit so I'm under it a bit and I like to turn at very high speed so I'm going to turn it up to very high speed and put on glasses. Have to lock it in place. Good idea to come from the outside in. That is to say from here in and from here in. And settle for very thin cuts early on, particularly. As it gets closer around, you can be a little more aggressive, but when you're doing the corners, take it easy. Take it 
tail shock loosened up a bit, so we'll tighten it again. Now I'm getting closer to round, so it's getting easier. So as you can see, it could be done with the rough end gouge the whole way. If you did that, you would want to use the, the uh, flats along here, make sure they're good and sharp, and then just use that kind of like a, um, a skew blade, essentially just cutting with that flat or that flat. And again, remember, start from the outside off the, off the blank and move toward the middle so you have support and it's not as likely to break on it. Can't see through it very much because it's all fuzzy. But let's move on to the next tool. <coughs> Many people have the um, carbide tools and would prefer to use carbide. I'm fine with that. If you use a carbide tool, you want to keep it about level. I'm going to change the position of that camera so you can see better. Okay, I hope that will be a little better. Now you're looking over my shoulder, essentially. There's me coming in at an angle. This is the tool rest under all that, under all that resin. So let's turn it on and we'll show you what... This is, again, uh, the Easy Wood tool. There we go. Um, and it's the simple negative rate cutter. You want to stay in horizontally and just let the tool do the work. This is really easy. I mean, you're just walking across there, and as long as you keep the tool horizontal, everything else is going to go fine. So if you're looking for a real easy way to do this, this is it. It is not fast, because you don't want to take a lot of the time. But I really, I don't know how you can screw this up. It just is so simple. Again, keep your, keep your tool horizontal. And then just move it along. This hand is my, my hand next to the, next to the tool rest is doing, I was going to say all the work, but there's no work involved. It's pushing the tool. And as I say, it's not a fast process, but this is a process that I would think is pretty foolproof. I don't think you can screw it up. And again, if you look at it, it looks a little better. Um, this is not a brand new uh, edge. Actually, it's an edge that's been used quite a lot. So, that's all there is to it if you use that. Now... My favorite tool is still the skew, and so we're going to move on to that too. Again, just trying to make the 
demonstration that no matter what tool you use, you can turn this material. When I make these videos, I often get the comment, well, you're a professional turner. I have turned a lot. I grant you that. But the tool doesn't know that. So anybody can turn the same way I can. Difference being, with experience, you get the tool to do what you want it to more often. But certainly you can do this with practice. And whether you want to practice or not on a blank that isn't cheap, that's up to you. I have turned hundreds of these when I was making pens for shows. And even when I turned hundreds of them, I blew one up every now and again. So the most important thing about doing this is to keep your mind on what you're doing. Usually, when I blew things up, it happened right at the end, when I was down to real close to the bushing, and, well, one more pass, and when I took the tool away, I didn't pay attention. And I would touch this with the tip of the tool, and that was the way I ruined more, most of my blanks. So, if you get to the point where you've been turning long enough on it, and you're just tired of it, Go get a cup of coffee. Don't don't push yourself when you're not not at your peak. Now one of the things that's different with the way I do it compared to the way most people do, I do not use any kind of a um, pen mill or anything to square the pen before I start. So if we look here, you may be able to see. See, we don't, we're not, there is where the end of the blank is, and then there's some clear resin beyond that. So it does need to be, um, does need to be squared yet. So I'm going to do that next, and once again I will show you how I do it. You can do it now or you can do it at the beginning. Either way, I strongly suggest you use something that is sandpaper, not a pen mill. A pen mill is great when they're really, really sharp, but unfortunately when they're not really, really sharp, they tear, tear the heck out of resin blanks. And this is a resin blank. So let me get it all set up for the facing the way I do it. The blank, which is the same size as the punch, and put that in there like this. Turn the lathe on and turn the speedway down. Okay, and now I can just lock that in place and move it forward with my hand. Try to see if I can do this in a way that you can see it. See, this is touching the sandpaper and that's what's that's what's uh, facing the blank, and I can see through the sand, through the um, resin, to see when I'm down to the orange part, which is where the actual blank starts. It is not quite down to the brass yet. So I need to go just a little bit farther to go down to the brass. And this one, if you look at it, I don't know if, well, we can see it a little bit. You can see that there is quite a bit of uh, resin showing. So I'm going to have to face that up. Of a fair amount. But that's what this system does. Move it up. Lock it, and then just 
rotate it with my fingers. Just, it's just touching the brass. You can see the brass is shining a little bit. I'm going to give it just one more little pass to make sure that it's square. Do the same thing on the other end. I think I'm hitting the brass now. No, just about. Very, very close. Give it one more touch. Good. Now I know that it's square on both ends and I can go back to the final turning. Before. This is the headstock, clearly. And this is a dead center, 60 degree dead center. If you've not done turning between centers, this is a 60 degree dead center. Then you put your turning between center bushings into your blank. These are made for a Sierra. This goes in here and you bring up your tailstock just like that. And again, for me, the skew is the way that I choose to, to turn. As you can see, because I took off the ends, it's wobbling a little bit. Now this is square and it will turn out to be um, done properly by the time we're finished. Also I need to turn the speed up considerably and take a couple of passes to warm up. These are the times where it's easy to make a mistake. You're almost finished. I'm trying to get that round. I'm trying to get rid of the wobble. Okay, I've reached round. So now everything that you do at this point, you've got to be careful. You're working with a very thin blank. If you have reservations about your abilities, this is a great time to get your sandpaper out. From here, you could go with a 240 sandpaper and you'd be able to make a pen out of it. I am cocky. We'll find out whether I should be or not. But <clears throat> I don't feel like I'm likely to break it. Again, you have more support when you come from the outside in. So it's not a bad idea to move from the from the outside in, when you hear that scraping sound, you are not turning well. That scraping sound means that you're, you're not cutting it off, you're scraping it off, and that can be a problem. So when you hear that, adjust what you're doing. This side is fine, we can sand that with 400 and be good. This side over here I want to take a little more off and in the middle I want to take a little more off. Personal preference. You can make the middle bulgy if you want to. I make it a little bit thicker, but not a lot. <clears throat> and now we want to get this down to the bushing. And again, this could be any tool. If you feel better using a, a rough or a um, carbide tool, please feel free to.
A lot of people like to use the round cutter. I am not as proficient with carbide tools as I am with with regular tools. I've been using these for 20 years. Okay, I could get closer than that, but instead I'm going to stop at this point and use the 400 grit. Turn the speed down to about a thousand RPM, somewhere in that neighborhood. And again, even though you're using sandpaper and it should be fairly safe, don't get it hot. Don't get any blank hot. You're not going to accomplish anything good if you get it real hot. So, you know, don't use padded um, sanding pads on here because then your fingers don't feel it if it's hot. You want to know if that is getting hot because that's a way to create a problem. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now we're going to take 600. This is 600. Great. And there it is. Now, because I have it, I go from here to a buffing system. When I didn't have it, I did Novus 3 and then Novus 2, and that worked out well too. So if you don't have a buffing system, you can use the Novus polish. Um, I will buff it and be right back, and you'll be able to see the results of that. And you have a gorgeous pen, very much worth whatever you decide to charge for it. I always looked at it as if, if I converted two out of three, my cost was whatever that was. And that was the cost that I based my pricing on. So I assumed that one out of three I was going to ruin. I did not ruin one out of three. But from a profit and loss point of view, if you're, if you're selling your work, plan on an additional cost for the occasional one that you will blow up. So it comes in several colors. This one is obviously an orange. It also, currently we have black um, and we have white and we have several others on order that will be coming, we hope. So, all in all, I hope you gain something from this. This is Ed from Exotic Blanks. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel. Of course, give us a like if you wish. And uh, we look forward to the next video and the next opportunity to share some tips and tricks with you and hopefully make your turning better and more profitable for you. Have a great day. Bye now.